So some of you guys are like, well, that's a small condolence, but still, it's something. Uh, are these parentheses necessary? No. No. Nope. Is there something out front? Uh, nope. It's just a one, so if I distribute it, it won't, won't change anything. Right? I wrote it down right, right? Um, there's a negative outside of the parentheses. Oh, there's a negative over here? Yeah. Okay, now they're necessary, right? Okay. So what's the very first thing? And again, we're going to do, yes? There is that negative next to the one over four. It's here. Yeah, there is that one. But the, is there one here? Yeah, there is one over there, but the one next to it, yeah, there is. It's not there? Yes. Okay, okay. All right. So this is number 47. Is that homework? All right. Uh, we are going to, let, let me do as much as I can with this problem with you guys, and then we're going to kind of go take it back a step and go some more basic equation stuff. But I got the feeling the other day that most of you guys know in an equation, one of the first things you want to do is distribute. And the main reason that is, is one of the next things you want to be able to do is get your like terms together. But if there are some like terms that are stuck inside of parentheses, you want to bust them out. That's why distribution is almost always the first thing you do. Because then everything inside is now free to go with something else, right? So what happens when I distribute this? Negative 1 fourth A plus 3 fourths. And then that's still sitting there, right? Is that cool? And then the equals negative 2, that side had nothing to do. It's just sitting there. Make my equals bigger. There you go. Now I can do like I just said. Now that I freed everything up, they're all able to move around. Where are my like terms on this side? The A's, right? What's 5 fourths A? Minus 1 fourth A. 1 A, kick ass. I got rid of some fractions I didn't even know was going to happen. You guys see that? One big thing, yes, sir? So all I'm doing right now is combining like terms, right? And my like terms are the A's on this side, right? So if I combine them, 5 fourths minus 1 fourth is 4 fourths, which is 1. So I got A, the 3 fourths is still here. So one big thing about equations, they're hard enough already, and then you guys are like, being even more mean to yourselves. What do I mean by that? You've got to write down what is happening because you want to be nice to yourself, right? There you go. All right. Thank you. I try. So some of you guys have just stuff happen over there and, and then you try to bring it back in and they end up on the wrong side and all this kind of shit. You want to be very strict about how you line things up. This line becomes this line. Identify the like terms. Now it's that's the A, that 3 fourths is still there, the equals, the negative 2, you guys see what I'm saying? When things just sort of like shift over to the other side, that's not legal, right? But if you're not careful, it's easy for that to happen. What's the last step that's going to be the hardest step in this problem, maybe? Can you change the 3 over 4 to the point 75? No. I mean, technically you could, but if it starts with fractions, I want it to end with fractions. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what this is. It doesn't. What would the next step be? A plus 7 equals 1. What's the next step? What if it was A minus 2 equals 1? What's the next step? Add 2. Add two. Right. <laughs> you see, so whatever the hell this is, I'm going to undo it. A plus something equals negative 2. I'm going to subtract that something. So then my A is by itself. I know what A is now once I put those together. And of course, how do I... I could put that together a few different ways. One over four? No. They're both negative, so you add them. No. They're both negative, so you add them. So two and, yeah, negative two and three-fourths. That's one way to do it. So just to remind you guys, if the two things you're putting together have the same sign, you add them. So for example, negative five minus eight. Five plus eight is 13. 
negative 13. Right? Isn't 2 plus 3 fourths 2 and 3 fourths? But everything's negative, so it's negative. Yes? Beautiful. So another way to do this is to get LCDs, right? You will. It just won't be mixed number, right? So let's see what we get. So I've got to multiply this by 4 to get the LCD. 4. So then I get negative 8 fourths minus 3 fourths. What's negative 8 minus 3? Mm. Mm. Are they both negative? negative? So you add them. Put the sign back on. If the two okay. things you're combining have the same sign, you add them, put the sign back on. You owe him eight bucks. You owe her three bucks. How much money do you owe all together? Eleven. All right, and then it'll be over four, right? Let's double check that. What's four times two? Plus three? Hey, right? So that's the same answer, just two different forms. How are we doing? You all right? So if the two things I'm dealing with have the same sign, I add them, and then I put the sign back on. If the two things I'm working with have opposite signs, I subtract them. What's 8 minus 3? No, 8 minus 3 is 5. Stay, stay with me. So then the answer, I put the sign of the bigger one on. That's the answer. Opposite signs, you subtract. Put the sign of the bigger one. Same sign you add and put the sign back on. I mean, that's the most fundamental rules. Now, if you think about money, it actually makes physical sense. I owe, I owe, I owe a lot. Shit. I owe eight bucks, I find three. How much do I still owe if I give them the three? Five bucks, right? No? Yes? No? Maybe. Right? If you owed somebody eight bucks, you find three bucks. You're like, here's three bucks. Just stay off my back for a little while. You still owe that person. If you owe somebody eight bucks, and I find three bucks, and I give it to you, how much do I still owe you? I owed you eight. I gave you three. I still owe you five, which is what this statement says in English, right? I owed you eight. I gave you three. I still owe you five. You guys see that? Money is something we can all kind of relate to. Right? I doubt any of us are like little Bill Gateses out there. It's like, how much is milk? 80 bucks? I don't know. All right. So, that's why you want to be Bill Gates' sister. He's like, here's 80 bucks. Go buy some milk. No problem, man. All right. Is that all right? That's an uglier equation because it's got some fractions. But the fractions actually sort of part of it take care of themselves. They, they had LCDs, right? So we're going to have to talk more generally about what we can do with fractions when they're inside of equations, but that's a bit in our future still. Anything else from homework specifically? What are you doing up there? Homework? Questions? Yes? Number 24. <coughs> What's 24 say? Oh yeah, I like it. Just like that? Yeah. Okay. So the very first step you do on this kind of problem, you don't even care what the numbers are gross, right? Numbers are kind of gross? First step, you don't care. Just how do you get the x by itself? Yeah, subtract 0.93, right? So now it's all about getting those together. Do they have the same sign? Do these have the same sign? No. Do they have the same sign? Yes. Yes, right? Do you see that? Yes. Aren't they both negative? Yes. Okay. So what do you do then? If they have the same sign, you uh, add, add them and then put the sign back on. So let me put the negative down. Let me put a, what am I going to put right there to help me out? Zero. So add them. Zero and three. One and nine. <laughs> No? Yes? See how that, that most basic math rule, if they have the same sign, if you're trying to combine them, they have the same sign, you add them, put the sign on. 
They have different signs. You subtract them and put the sign of the bigger one back on. Maybe? Maybe. This is the kind of problem I'll give you on that part that you can't use calculators on. Okay, so anything else from homework stuff? Yes? You like number 59? Let me see if I can stop myself from doing the whole problem. Um, the difference of n and 1 over 6 is 1 over 2. Is? 1 over 2. 2? Two. 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 Okay. So this is like, this is the first level translation. So I don't know if I've said this yet, but math is a foreign language, right? English is my second language. Math, I think, is my first language. But for most of us, we're trying to learn the new language of mathematics. So this is English right now, for the most part. It's kind of like pseudo-English, to be honest. Uh, 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 honest. Difference of n and 1 sixth. How do I write that? What's difference indicate? Negative. Not negative, but subtraction. So it would be? Is? So that's the problem, right? So you see how that's just a one-step problem, really? Well, it's sort of a two-stepper, but one step to do it, and then you got to do some other work to get the stuff together. What's the one step to get in by itself? Yeah, and then I'll let you guys finish it up. I think I've done enough homework for you. Is that right? So was it, normally it's the step of how to translate it into math-ish, right? Yeah, um, so is that like the is is as an equal? Yes. Yes. So if I had to read this in English, I'd say x added to 0.93 is negative 4.10. So that is is very often equals. I got you. You guys all right? Yeah. What's up? Oh, all right. Um, so how do I, let's break this down a little bit. How would I write the difference of x and 7? How would I just write that in mathish? x minus 7. Is that cool? Because difference means subtraction. So if I said, what's the difference of 10 and 7? You would just say, what? What's the difference of 10 and 7? 3. 3, because 10 minus 7 is 3. So what's the difference of x and 7? I'm not saying give me a number. I'm just saying translate that. I don't know what the shift the difference of x and 7 is, but I can write it in mathish. Right? So that would be x minus 7. I'm not asking you to do more than that. Right? And if I said solve it, you, you kind of can come up and kick me in the, you know, like, you can't solve that crap. Right? Can you simplify this? No. Can you solve it? Definitely not, because it's not an equation. Right? Now, the one we had up here is an equation. You could solve it. So what, let's try one like that. What if I said, here's the first example. What if I said the product of eight and a number is, what you got, Jeff? 72, sure. The product of eight and a number, how do I write that? Eight x. You can use your favorite letter, doesn't matter, because it just says a number. Eight x is? Equals 72. Is that cool? Yeah. And then solve. And how do I solve that? Divide by 8 because I want to kill the 8. Yeah. yeah. Kill that freaking 8. X equals 9. Maybe? Yeah. So look back up at the original problem we had up here. The difference of this and that. So I'm just gonna write this and that and put a minus in between because that's what difference means. If I said, would have said the sum of, I would have put a plus there. If I would have said product of, I would have put a times there. If I would have said quotient of, I would have put that over that divide, right? So the difference of that and that is one half. Is that, do you guys see how that is a translation problem? And we all know the older you get, the harder it is to learn a new language. Yes? 
So if only you would have taken French in first grade, you'd be speaking French now, right? <laughs> but if you take French in college, you're like, oh, shit. Conjugate my what? And then how do you solve that equation? We already said it, but it's just add one-sixth, right? One -sixth, right? Yeah. At that level, what I do doesn't matter what the hell this is. N minus something equal, okay, I add the something. Now I care what it is on the next step because now I got to know how to hell to put one half and one sixth together. Yeah. Right, and that's, and you're going to need to get a LCD to cast. All right, so you guys can finish that one out. Is Would that all right? you carry the negative until you get the LCD or do you? No negative involved, right? Because what do I do on the next step? <laughs> right. You add it. Add it. So you get the LCM of? Positive one six. Yes, LCD of two and six. Yeah, the LCD doesn't care if there's a negative in there. It doesn't give a shit. It just cares about the numbers. Yeah. You guys doing all right? I can't read you at all. Some of you I can read, but you're not asking questions. Your face is like, I got so many questions, and you're not saying anything. So I'm not sure what to make of that. Some of you guys are like, stop talking to me, math boy. Just get back to the TR. Right, stop. Um, Okay, anything else from homework before we get back where we were? Okay, I've got this here. Let me give you this. It sort of captures a little bit of what I did yesterday. x a value and then we sort of built an equation just to show you the reverse of what we do when we solve an equation. We're trying to undo all that stuff. So I want to give you a few examples of that but what I want you to try to do right now is down here at the bottom number one, two, three, four. Notice I say solve and check. So let me know if you need help and you can always work with other people. Solve those at the bottom there.
a little bonus question if you get done before I get into it. Before you start on the bonus, make sure you actually checked your answers to what you did. Take a look. Um, so you always ask yourself, is the X stuff by itself? No. What's with the X stuff? 11. Right? So what do you do? And the 11 is currently subtracting, so how do you undo that? Add. So you're always trying to think, undo what's being done so I can unbury the variable. Right? Somebody put this shit on top of it. Let me unput that shit on top. So let me add 11, so I'm doing the opposite. So those cancel, here's the x, here's the equals, and of course you get 20. So that's the answer, if you wanna check it, you rewrite this, but you put a 20 in place of x, and is that a true statement? Yes, cool. I like it. I like it a lot. Same thing, it, it doesn't, I really want you guys to start to realize, Whatever the operation is, it doesn't matter. It's the same idea. What is happening to the x? Let me undo it. So in this, oh, yes? I think what's confusing is like where there's negatives in there. Not, just, like, not for this one, but in general. Like on number three? Yes. Yeah. Okay, don't worry, we'll get there. Do you guys realize there's a negative in here? No. N yes, there is, negative 11? Yeah. Yes, and what did I do? Added 11, yeah. why did I do that? Because together they cancel. So my whole idea is I want to get only x on one side. So whatever else is there, I want to kill it. Do the opposite. Do the opposite. Yes. So what's happening right here is multiplication. What's the opposite of that? Division. So that's what I do with what I want to kill. What do I want to kill? Three. You guys see that? Don't subtract. Subtraction can't cancel multiplication. Right. So they die then. So what's left? Yeah, x on this side and then negative 4 there, so then I know what x is. And to check it, 3 times negative 4, is that negative 12? Yes. Yay. How are we doing? To be honest, every equation has the same idea. It's just some equations, of course, have more and more and more shit in them, and some of them have functions we don't even know yet. But every time you learn a new function, we have to at the same time learn its opposite so that I'm able to solve equations with that in it. Okay. So this one, it, it seems a little evil, you know, like it's adding, but it's adding a negative eight. 
So how do I cancel the negative 8? At 8. So this is gone. So you get x equals, yeah, this will be negative 3 for sure. Different signs. 11 minus 8 is 3. Put the sign of the bigger one back on. Cool. And you see, when you do something, make sure it did what you wanted it to do. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I'll have people put a minus 8 here. These don't cancel. So don't just do it because you know it's supposed to happen. Make sure what you did makes that happen. How do I check this the same way as always? Negative 8 plus negative 3 is negative 11. I like it. How are we doing? Everybody all right? And then this guy, same idea. Idea doesn't change. Why is the x not by itself? Stupid 6. What's the 6 doing? Dividing. Dividing. So how do I kill that division? Multiplication. Multiplication. So if I multiply both sides by 6, what happens to it? Plus. Plus you. So I get x equals 18. I told you, you got the right answer. You okay. got to be careful, though. Here's what I wanted. To, I'm going to say this a few times probably this semester, especially when we get to word problems. What's the name of this class? Algebra. Algebra. So, more than likely, if you do a problem and you don't use algebra to get to the answer, you are not going to get all the points. Maybe not many at all, right? So, when, it, when we get to word problems, which everybody, I know you're all like, please, when are we getting there, man? I want them. When we get there, if you get the answer by guess and check or by whatever, and it's not algebra, you're obviously not going to get many, if any, points. My example is if you're taking driver's ed, and the, and the instructor says, okay, drive to the mall and call me when you get there, that's your final exam, which is really has problems, I don't care. And you walk to the mall, and you call him, and you're like, I made it to the mall. And he's like, the car's still here. <laughs> What's the matter? I made it to the mall. Well, the whole purpose of the damn class is learning how to drive. So if you do a problem not using algebra, you're not doing the purpose of the class. How could you pass it? Okay, maybe, maybe. So don't come at me with the, I got through it in, I don't care. You must not have used algebra to get it. Uh, and then to check this, I put an 18 in place of X, and sure enough, that works, right? Kick ass. So uh, let's look at some more interesting problems. I'll do the bonus in a little bit. Don't worry. I don't know if anybody, anybody figure that out maybe? No. Yeah. Okay. Just have, just sit on it. Um, <laughs> it works out. Let me see if you're working. So let's do a little more interesting problem. Let's do, uh, yeah. Let me add one little wrinkle to this first problem up there. So here's the right way to look. Uh, an equation like this. Which term has x in it? It's kind of a dumb question. Right? Which term has x in it? 5x. Five. Five Why is that term not by itself? Because the stupid 11. So how do I kill the negative 11? Add 11. Right? And then this is why I say you almost always will divide last. Right? If I divided by 5 right now, do you see all the fractions I would make when you don't really need them? Right? I'd rather make any fractions when I'm done because then I don't have to use them. Now I just have to do what? Divide by 5. Divide by 5. Shaboom! And if you plug it in, 5 times 4 is 20, minus 11 is 9. Yeah. Uh, did you sound like you were the farm there? I don't know. So. No, I do not. All right. So this is kind of like a combination of this and this, right? So they have multiple things happening. So what if I had something like this?
Now here, actually, there's a couple things you could do first, but if you strictly follow what I've been saying, what term has x in it, x over 7? Why is that term not by itself? Because the stupid plus 2. How do you kill the stupid plus 2? Subtract. Subtract 2. I mean, right? Minus 2 minus 2. This cancels. Equals 3. And now it looks a lot like that problem over there. How do you kill that crazy ass 7? Put it over 1. Yeah. You multiply by because it it's dividing. So multiply both sides by 7. Die. X equals 21. Woo Maybe? All right, now watch. I do want to come back to this bonus now. I don't know how many people have tried it out. Let me move it over there. Um, this is a very long room. Jeez. What's it say? X plus 3 minus 2X equals negative X plus 3. Something really, really freaky happens. What's the first thing I should do? Are there any parentheses? No. So no distribution. Somebody, I heard it. I heard combine it. Like combine terms. like terms. Right? So what like terms do I have over here? Yeah. So what's x minus 2x? No. Negative x. Negative x. Maybe you already noticed something's weird here. How do I get my x's together? How do I make these cancel? Add x. Because I know I want to get my x's on one side, right? But what's going to happen? Zero. What do you get? Zero equals zero. No. What do you get? Three, three equals three. three. Right? Now, you know, on one level you might be like, I have just discovered that three equals three. Oh, I am amazing. Right? But watch, watch, watch. What does it really mean when I get this answer? This is how you interpret this formally. When this statement is true, then this statement is true. That's why we check it the way we do. We make that true, and we see if that statement is true. That's how we check it. You guys kind of with me? So it's the same thing. It's a stupid equation. I should be able to interpret it the same way. When this statement is true, then this statement is true. Well, when is this statement not true? It's always freaking true. Do you guys see what I'm saying? So this is always true. It doesn't matter what x is. And in fact, it should kind of make sense what I just said because the x's cancel. How much influence do they have in this equation? Zero. None. They die, right? So this, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. It's, it's called an identity. Uh, the answer is all real numbers. Any value of x you plug in, it will, it will work. It will be true because the values you use would cancel each other out. Okay, maybe. That might be a little too much in our future, but we'll come back to more of those at some point. Okay, all right. Now, try out on the back, on the other side. Uh, let's see, the first four should be pretty easy. Let's try the, do this, do E, F, and G. We'll come back to A, B, C, D sometime. But right now, do E, F, and G. You can uh, check with other people near you. You can call me over if you need some help. If you do this, you have to do it to both sides. You just subtracted 2x from this one side and did nothing to that side. Yeah, so whatever you do to one side, it'd be the equal sign. If you do the other side, it'd be equal. Oh, yeah, this is going to be just like the bumps. Trying to get you ready for that. So eventually, those X's are going to leave. They're going to kill each other. And if the result is true, it's all in numbers. The result. That would have been like 3 plus 2. Yeah. 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 I don't remember which one that is. You would write down. Yep. Oh, okay. If that's what it comes out to be. Yeah. Okay. 